yourself, look at yourself, look at yourself. This is who you are? <laughs> Tell me, tell me how it started. When, when did you start cutting yourself? It's actually really interesting how I discovered it. Because um, I had so much pain and stuff that I didn't know how to express. Mm -hmm. um, it was when I was 16 was the first time. I was with a guy. There's always a guy, always. Mm -hmm. And I had cheated on him or something. And it's funny that they show the mirror. Because I punched a mirror and the glass fell and it cut me. Unintentionally, it cut me. And I saw the blood and I said, oh, I like this. I like the way this feels. And that's when it just began. I, mm. I discovered that this could help me. So then I moved on to razors. And it was always something to do with the guy. And because of that, I would cut myself on my breasts or in my pubic area just, and then I was, it got so bad I was doing it like four times a week. And it'd be the simplest thing. It's like somebody calls you a hoe. It's like that hurt me, like it got mm. my heart. You know, so you actually cut yourself, you cut your body. Do you feel pain when you're using the razor on the skin? At that point, no. Because I'm in so much emotional pain, the physical pain doesn't exist. Okay, so you cut your body and there's no pain. And then once it's open, what is the feeling that you get when you see the blood? I feel... I feel pleasure mm -hmm. in the pain. And I see that I'm alive. I'm like, I exist, I'm alive. I'm alive, I'm important, I'm here, I'm here, I exist. This is my life, this is my life. Because I didn't feel alive, I felt dead, mm -hmm. and I felt numb. And when I saw the blood, I could, I remembered that I was alive. Mm -hmm. And what finally gave you, what took care of it? Was it the intervention? Yeah, let's take a look at your intervention. The intervention's very important. She will not make it if she doesn't get help. Hi, hi, I'm Candy Finnegan. I'm Tamala. I'm, it's nice to meet you. Here's your family, and we want you to come in and sit down. Hi, everybody. <laughs> We've come together collectively to see how we can help you have a happier life. I just want to say, I'm sorry that we didn't help you when you were a little girl. I, I was shocked and numbed by the sexual molestation, and I didn't know it was coming up in your later life and hurting you. This is just a tiny group of people that love and care for you. We want to help you, and we want to put you in treatment so you can help yourself. We love you so much. Thank you, Mom. Uh, we have to take a break, but when we come back, Tamala is going to help a teenager re reveal to her mom that she has issues with cutting. We'll be right back. fans, The Tyra Show has moved to New York. If you're in the New York City area and you want to be a part of my live studio audience, go to tyrashow.com for free tickets. When some people hear the word addiction, they picture drugs or alcohol. But for too many young woman, women, refuge comes in the form of another self-destructive behavior, which is cutting. Joining us to reveal how many young girls are turning to cutting are 14-year-old Jackie and her mother, Heidi. So, Jackie, you say that there's a lot of girls in your high school that are cutting themselves. Um, yes, about 75% of my grade, girls-wise, is cutting themselves. How much percent? 75. 75? Sure. Yeah. So, like, three out of four girls are cutting themselves? Yes. I've, I've, I did not know that, that there were that many girls doing this. Yes. Why do they do it at your school that often and that because much? Because they just have problems, like, with their family or with drinking and alcohol, and they just need some stress reliever, and that helps them. Mm -hmm. um, as her mom, uh, you know, hearing this, 75% of girls cutting. Is that shocking to you? Very shocking. Yeah. Well, um, Jackie, actually, she reached out to the Tyra show. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, she reached out to talk about her friends cutting mm -hmm. and how prevalent it is in her school. But she, um, she also said something else in the, in the mail to us that, um, that she's scared to talk about. And she felt like this was a safe place to talk about it. Um, and she wants to talk to you about it right now. Is that okay if she talks to you about, about what she wants to talk to you about right now, mm -hmm. Mom? Yeah. Okay, so Jackie, why don't you turn to your mom? And it's a safe place. I know you wrote me to be able to do this here to feel safe. Because of all of us arguing all the time and all of our family problems, um, I think 
hurting myself too. <laughs> and it's hard because I don't want to do it. And it's really hard on me. And I don't know it's hard on you because you got all my friends that do it. <laughs> okay. Um, why don't you tell me? You could have told me. You know, you can tell me anything. I was scared. Why are you scared, Jackie? Because your mom, is, she seems pretty open, like she would be okay to hear it. You know you can. And you talk to me all the, You know you can talk to me anytime. Why? why? Anytime. Why? why? Because you were always yelling all the time at me and my brother. And I just... I don't know, I didn't even scared to tell you because I was afraid you might just lose it and go off. Tell your mom the first time that you um, cut yourself. Oh, when was that? Me and you were arguing and I just, a friend had told me about how her and her mom argue all the time and I just thought that it would help me if I did it and I was really scared but... Okay, and when you cut yourself, what did that feel like? It felt like everything had just gone away, and I was just I was happier. And I felt like I didn't have to. I didn't have so much held on me. And how many cuts did you do on your body that night? About ten on my arms, and a couple on my hips. Okay. Cooper Lawrence is still with us in the audience. Um, what do you What do you make of of, of Jackie's situation? First of all, I think she's extremely brave to be able to to say this today. Absolutely. Right. of the culture of perfection that a lot of girls are living in. Lots of straight-A students are cutters, you'd be surprised. Mm. I don't know if it's 75%, maybe it's different at your school, but, but there are a lot more girls that are doing this than you, because it's perfectionism and this need to be perfect. And the reason why you feel good after you cut is because the actual physical act of cutting releases endorphins. Oh, okay. So the same way if you have a really good workout or a good run or, or eat a piece of chocolate, which is, I think, better than cutting. But yeah. it's the idea that you just, you need that, the endorphin release because you're feeling so much pain or so much anger or you feel so frustrated that you can't live up to your mother's expectations. But the truth is your perception of her expectations are different than what they really are. If she knew that that was your result, then I think that she would probably let up on you a little bit. I think the two of you need to really have a very serious conversation. Well, we're connecting Jackie with a treatment center near her home in Texas that is ready and waiting and willing to begin a treatment plan for you to help you with your cutting. Right? You want some help? Can you go to that? Yeah, because we don't want you to be the 75% of the, the girls in your school. Maybe you can be a leader. Actually, you are a leader right now, being on television and talking about it. And all those girls are watching the Tyra show going, oh, my God, Jackie's talking about cutting, and I just cut myself yesterday. And maybe I can follow with the help that Jackie has had. Okay? So you're a leader today, not a follower. Thank you. You're welcome. Good luck. Good luck. Good luck. Tyra. Why did you do that too? I never said that. Last time, the bad girls pushed Tyra to the edge. Now they're back. Just apologize and say I was oh, wrong. I, 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 listen. And they're going from bad to worse. You're trash. Plus, has violent TV turned into a real life epidemic? I was defending myself. That doesn't really look like defending to me. Would you consider yourself to be a violent girl? Next Tyra. with something we see all sorts of people doing all the time, cosmetic surgery. Here is Heidi's story. Shopping to me is like a drug. Heidi is addicted to shopping and plastic surgery. Her outrageous spending sprees have sent her spiraling into a pit of debt and despair. I owe mega money, mega bucks. Heidi has ruined her finances and her relationship with her family. She's not happy. It's just to get away from something. I look in the mirror and I have feelings of just wanting to improve. I had liposuction of my neck, lip implants. 
nine plastic surgeries.